following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. This week on the Defy Life Podcast, the guys review the 2022 NFL Draft and talk some NBA playoffs. They also answer a listener question and dig into this week in history. On to the show. Let's get it. Welcome, welcome to the Defy Light Podcast, powered by the Defy Light Podcast Network. This is episode 218. This is uh, sponsored by Bud Bottles, home of the Bud Bottle and the Bud Freshener. Please visit BudBottles.com for your odor eliminating needs. Y'all come on in, wipe your feet, close the door behind you. I'm your host, J.R. Glimpf, joined as always by my wonderful co-host, Alvin Glimpf. What's good with you, cuzzo? Yo, yo, what's going on, cuz? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, Ready to, uh, you know, we we got the draft in the book, so it was kind of a long workup, and we're going to talk about that. But yeah, man, I'm good. Uh, Pooh will be joining us shortly. He uh, had to work some overtime in the the, uh, the Nebraska office, so he'll be joining us shortly. All right. Well, you know, got to make sure all the doors is locked and the alarms and everything is off because, you know, Nebraska ain't as safe as it used to be so we want right. to make sure everything is taken care of yeah man he say he's working overtime but you know he just hired that, that french maid to clean up his office at night so mm. I, don't, I don't know what he up to don't get rumors started you know oh, keto hey, don't like don't right. get it started you ain't heard that from me you ain't hear from us nah nah not at all but yeah man um, it's good to be here man y'all uh i hope everybody enjoyed the draft i hope uh everybody is, is well rested and having a good week um, as, as we always do, a little bit of house cleaning before we get into the meat of the show. Um, we're going to give a shout out to our patrons. Big salute to y'all. Uh, y'all stay supporting. We love y'all. Uh, if you want to become a patron of the Fire Life, uh, please visit patreon.com forward slash go to Fire Life and uh, just pick your tier. You can uh, support on any level. Everything is uh, appreciated. We love y'all. Uh, if you want to listen to us, you can check us out at go to defy life I'm sorry, that's www.defylifepods.com, or you can uh, check us out at uh, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, Apple, anywhere you listen, iTunes, anywhere you listen to your favorite uh, podcast platform. Uh, you can check out our written content at go to the original. And you can check out our branded apparel, all of our merch, at defylifegear.com. L, did I cover everything? Because, like the NFL draft, excellently executed. Man, round one through seven, huh? That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, man. Um, Before we get into talking about this draft, man, and, and some NBA stuff, um, I want to give a quick shout out to all the mothers out there, man. It's uh, before we, mm. by the next time we talk to y'all again, and Mother's Day will be have uh, passed. So, uh, it's Mother's Day is Sunday, man. Shout out to my mother. Shout out to my wife. Shout out to all the the mothers that are out there listening to the show and those that uh, support the network. All of our wives, uh, the one I, the half of the one I shut crew. Um, you know, we definitely, definitely appreciate. And are grateful for each and every one of you. Um, you know, um, a, a lot of us, well, none of us will be here without you, but a lot of us wouldn't be here as long as we will, as long as we have been without you. So um, we, we appreciate all the mothers out there. Yes, sir. No doubt, no doubt. Um, echoing all of that to all the moms. Definitely a happy Mother's Day to my wife. Um, to my moms, rest in peace. Shout out to all those who are missing their moms on Mother's Day. This is definitely not the best time of the year for, for many folk around. So shout out to all of those who are going through it. And for all those ladies, including your moms, who were moms like to me in my life, definitely happy Mother's Day to y'all because uh, y'all, you know, it's a, it's a village 
and we all have come up in that village and it's much appreciated so to to those ladies to my sisters my cousins and like you said to all the listeners who are who are mothers shout out shout out to y'all happy mother's day no doubt and and and, and a shout out like you mentioned to all the aunties out there man aunties mm-hmm. don't get enough uh you know credit for stepping in and you know being you know <laughs> like they say mothers that can give the kids back at times uh, oh yeah but yeah shout out to all the aunties man we, we appreciate y'all i'm sure the mothers that are out there appreciate the aunties a lot so um shout out to all the aunties like you said that's that step in and then and fill that void uh, no doubt man we've been blessed you know to have some amazing women who have you know uh mothered their own but also it throughout the process and um i i look at it as a as a as a show of love to their their partners, their husbands, you know, that they would look out for their uh, the nieces and nephews right. that in many in many cases don't share their blood, you know what I mean? And but still, uh, mother on them and are, are incredibly mother like. So we've been blessed to have many 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 aunties who have shown up as mothers. In, in our in our life so yeah. i think that is part of the fabric of our culture that we call this glimp thing that we got going on absolutely man i absolutely agree um another important date um for me and i know a lot of our listeners and to you um but saturday uh this saturday may 7th uh shout out to all the may birthdays out there but may 7th hello because it's, it's may season <laughs> it's may season, it's may season baby. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but first of all, I just want to give a big shout out to the late, the great Tommy Glimp Senior. Man, my father's birthday is Saturday. Uh, shout out to you, pops. Um, we 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 miss you every day. Um, every day. And um, also, May seventh just happens to be the initial episode anniversary of When I Shut. Um, hey. So, um, shout outs all around. But yeah, May is the shit, man. Uh, so. You know, we we know so many May birthdays, including us too. Okay, Your okay, son. including us. Including <laughs> right, us. Yes. the list is too uh, long. Nephew, Lil right. Wayne. Yeah, Lil Wayne. Um, yeah. Also my five, brother so Darren. Yeah, your brother Dad, right? So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's deep. It's, yeah, it's, it's so many. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, mayhem all around, man. Hello, no doubt. But yeah, um, we. Okay, so before Pooh gets on, and you know Pooh will step in in the office and, and not mention that he's here and not announce himself, because so, yeah. he he could be here for all we know. Right, he ain't, he ain't here yet though. You know, he's like hiding <laughs> on the folks' desks and shit. He ain't here yet though. But um, before we get, and I just want to get your general across the league opinions on a couple of things. Okay. Um, so throughout the whole draft. All picks included. All two hundred sixty-two picks. Um, mm. Who's who? Who you think was the biggest steal of the draft? So and I might be biased. I'm sorry. Of course, y'all. This is all just speculation. We don't know shit. We won't know. Right, for right. It's, it's three, four years. So don't argue, man. This shit ain't happened yet. Don't 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 it, don't it, fuss it, with us too much. Right, right. It's just our opinion. Early, early, best guess. And it is all just, you know, for the for those who are really into this draft life, it's it's always a good idea to just peek at past drafts mm-hmm. and past draft grades to see how far off people were um, or not. But um, it, it, I, I just kind of got I get a kick out of that. But um, for for me. The biggest steal of the draft, and again, I might be biased because I'm a Jet fan, but the Jets being able to get uh, Jermaine Johnson late in the first round where where some people had him as a top 10 pick. Um, And I think for, you know, what they had to give up for him, which, you know, with all the draft capital they had wasn't much. And the also fulfilling a need with a quality pass rusher on top of the uh, what I think is the best cornerback in the draft and uh, my second best wide receiver in the draft, I'm, I'm, I think they, they will look back at this as definitely a game-changing draft, not just because of him, but definitely he's going to be a big part of that story. No doubt, no doubt, yeah. Um, 
the guy who fell a little further than, than most of us were expecting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and Jermaine Johnson. But I, I actually think, you know, it was that happy medium for me, um, where I think he ended up going where I thought he should have gone. Um, mm. Not, you know, outside of the the hype building up from him with an amazing Senior Bowl week. And then mm-hmm. leading up to the draft, I think it had a like overhyped his draft stock a little. I think he settled right where he should have, and he ended up in a very good situation. Um, last time, the Jets had uh, three first round picks. Do you know who they got in those in, with those picks? That, that would, would be, be was that the Brickershaw? Nope, nope. That wasn't that draft. <laughs> then I don't know. That would be. Chad Pennington, John Abraham, and Kyle Brady. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I was. I remember that draft distinctly because I was at Pooh's house, where we were at his mama's house, watching the draft that year. Right. And um, so, if, if if Jermaine Johnson ends up anything like John Abraham, the Jets did it, did it right. We'll be, we'll, we'll be real, real happy. <laughs> right. Real, real happy. Yeah. And you know, you know with with the. Uh, the biggest thing about the Jets right now is they just needed a lot of talent. Right. And they just had a lot of holes. So, you know, to come out of this draft with uh, three in the first round who should be, you know, contributing early in the season, um, I think they this this was definitely a high mark. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, and a little bit, I'm going to get a little bit of the, the shameless self-promotion here. So, you know, every year I, I compete in the uh, the National Mock Draft Contest. Um, shout out to the guys over at the Huddle Report. Uh, but everybody, it's over 150 guys, mock draft experts from across the nation have been doing this for about six, seven, eight years now. Um, everybody from mm-hmm. Todd McShay, Mayock used to do it. So everybody, um, you know, Kuiper, everybody does it. So I always get mm-hmm. everybody to do it. And this year, I, um, first off, I had to force myself to do a mock draft. You know, usually I'm doing one every other month. Um, mm-hmm. And over the years, it's kind of slowed down. This year, I did one mock draft. I was like, fuck it. This is the one that I'm going to do, and it's going to count. Um, best best one I've done since the first year I did it. Uh, mm-hmm. out of, I finished 27th, and how it works is I finished 27th out of 155 submitted drafts. Okay. And um, I think I finished like 12th out of the top 100 um, prospects. So how it works is there's two contests. Uh, you know, you can do either or you can do both. Um, so the mock draft, you get three points for hitting on player matching team and spot. You get mm, okay. two, two points for player matching team and one point for just the player being selected in the first round. All right. So it's a one round mock contest. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. uh so yeah so um you know including ties and all that stuff i ended up 27th out of 155 um That's not bad yeah. at all yeah so i have 41 points the winner ended up with 48 there were two two winners uh they had 48 points so it was pretty good and then the top 100 you just list your top 100 prospects and it's just how it is if you know however many of those guys get selected you get a point so i finished uh i think i finished 19 or something like that da, da, da. so pretty good year okay um but with that being said this was my swan song y'all i am done doing mock drafts um i'm passing it on to lincoln <laughs> and okay he okay. will be handling the mock drafts uh for the uh for the site and i will show him the ropes as we move along till next year uh he will be hosting his own mock uh, draft shows and the mock draft show next year he will be the host um, unless he mm. wants me to, but yeah, um, unless he wants me to still do it, but everything else he's doing. Um, so he's excited. I'm excited for, him. um, so yeah, yeah I'm re- I'm he's retired. ready. He's ready. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So with that being said, I'm, I'm out, <laughs> um, but I ain't completely out, but, um, next question. So Al, who, who is your biggest reach of the draft? Wow. So, I mean, there's really one draft pick 
I mean, I can't say I, I watched the entire draft, but I definitely watched the entire first round. There was only one first round pick that had me like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, Stingley going third. Mm, okay. And um, I think potential wise, he has an extremely high ceiling. But I just feel like for that third pick, yeah, that's not what you want when there are solid, more solid players mm-hmm. at the third pick. And so that, you know, and so from the reach perspective, at least like, well, you know, maybe you could have traded back and got him. It just seemed kind of high to get a, a cornerback who, you know, definitely has showed, you know, his freshman year, he has elite talent. But then, you know, I just... There's a, a a tendency when you hurt in college, you usually are hurting the pros, mm-hmm. and and so just to t- take that risk at the at the third pick, and really that's just part of it's just all about where he was picked in terms of this reach comment, and um, I I, I just was shocked that um, that they would one be interested in the cornerback, especially um, with their were some great. The, uh, offensive tackles on the board mm-hmm. and to get what could be the best cornerback but definitely the one with out of the top cornerbacks the one with the most um, flags mm-hmm. you know it just seemed kind of high at, at uh, number three yeah um I agree. I think that was a bit of a reach, you know, especially when, like you said, there were there was a better prospect at the same position um, mm-hmm. to, to to me and to most people. Um, and like you like you also said, you know, injured college college players usually become injured pro players. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, as talented as Stingley is, he hasn't shown and and you know displayed that talent in two years. Mm. So it's it's tough to imagine that, you know, it's not like a Jamar Chase where he just set out for a year and, you know, um, you know, because of COVID, but it was, it was mostly due to injuries and just lackluster play. So I agree with you. Um, I got to go and I ain't even putting my, my input in on all these questions, but, uh, the Patriots taking Cole Strange in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> um, and it dude, was kind of strange. <laughs> right. It was very apropos, I would say. Um, yeah. Um, I, you know, it's, it's not often that I was telling Lincoln, because he was like, who is Cole Strange? Don't even know this dude. I was like, man, mm. that's early to have your first, first who moment. Like, uh-huh. I always, like, watching the draft, I'm always like, okay, I'm on it. How long I can go? And have my first who moment, <laughs> and uh, I had I, I I knew Cole Strange. I was clowning Lincoln. I was like, I mean, you didn't make it out the first round without getting your first who moment. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Bill Belichick, for that. Thank you, Bill Belichick. <laughs> did you see Sean Mc Sean McVay's reaction? <laughs> no, I did. Oh my God, it was definitely the funniest moment of the draft, without question. They have a video of Sean McVay when he when this kid gets picked. His reaction is. Oh wow! I guess I don't have to worry about him being in the fourth round at at one hundred and three or something like that. Like, oh shit! Right, just like yo, I don't know why you picked him three rounds early, son. <laughs> right, like we man, we was going, we, we thought we was doing something, sneaking up, taking him in the fourth. Like, right, 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 went right. all the way, taking him in the, at twenty four. Like, wow. Well, yeah. Leave it to Belichick, though. I don't know. Sometimes yeah, yeah, trying to outsmart everybody. Right. That's what. Like sometimes I just think, you know, when you when certain, and and of course you can't bash the man's resume, but but oh no, oh no, you know, Bill Belichick has shown, you know, and the Patriots have shown a knack to to miss on first round picks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like the, the, it happens a lot to them. Um, and I think a lot of that is because they do try to outsmart everybody else. Um, and this is definitely a, fa- a matter of, we always talk about value. 
Right. And that's right. like whether this guy turns out and that like, we ain't talking about, you know, whether Cole Strange is going to turn out to be a three time Pro Bowler 20, you know, 12 years from now. We're talking about the value right now. And it's just horrible mm-hmm. value. So, yeah. Um, shout out to the Patriots and their 30% success rate in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, overall, What's your what's your biggest takeaway from this draft? You have to focus on one theme that stood out to you the most. What would be your biggest takeaway? The biggest takeaway is to me is the wide receiver thing that's going on in this league right now. And it's a it seems like you are either able or willing to pay a top dollar for a wide receiver or you are more of this mindset of I'm going to go draft me one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this draft has happened to be filled, you know, 15, 20 deep with quality wide receivers. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think um, it it was just apparent that people are um, doing a good job of developing them in the, in the college. And then also seeing them as a way to, avoid paying um getting some production without having to pay 20 25 30 million dollars for a wide receiver yeah it's very nba like mm-hmm. yeah um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh yeah and, and it's, it's almost like it's, it, this is going to happen very quickly uh due to the money flying around for receivers and we've seen it happen to other positions before um, but this is going to happen very quickly where re- the receiver position is going to become pretty fungible. And we're seeing it now, like you said, where those guys at the top are kind of going to, like despite the numbers they put up, top flight receivers don't necessarily win you championships, right? Mm-mm-mm-mm. And so teams are going to say, hey, I can get two, three young guys and to replace the production I'm getting from this one 25 million 30 million dollar player and um you know get me a few you know cooper cups <laughs> versus one Devonte. right you know um or you know you know guys that can work on their rookie contract so you know we, we've seen it happen to the running back position over the years we saw it happen a few years ago to the guard position remember when uh what was it Derek dockery Got like fifty eight million from was it, like Washington or from Buffalo. Yes. He went from Buffalo to Washington. Was Washington. Or, yeah, yes, he got he left from Buffalo went to Washington, um, and then every, all the guards started getting paid. Like guard was the it position for a minute, um, until people just realized, hey, I can draft a dude named Cole Strange in the first round and, <laughs> <laughs> and replace Derek Dockery. Um, so yeah, so it, it, it's you know you mentioned. You know how the 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 peculiar movement of wideouts is, uh, and and I ain't mad at them. Get your money though, you know. Um, but it, it is weird. I think this this is gonna cycle through really quickly, and it ain't gonna end well. Not with receivers involved. It ain't gonna end well. Um, but we can. Um, I mean, it's like some teams you either have. A young, a young quarterback, quarterback on a rookie, you know, mm-hmm. uh, deal. So then you can't afford to pay. Yeah. Are you Alan? You went away. My bad. My bad. <laughs> so I'm just saying that some of these teams have a young rookie quarterback on a rookie salary Mm -hmm. like Miami, like Philly, and they're able to pay a big wide receiver contract. But then if you have a quarterback who's on a $50 million deal, like the chiefs, you got to let Hill go. So it's kind of hard, you know, even like green Bay, you know, was like, oh, we don't know. We can pay Devontae all that money. Um, you know, it's just you got to pick and choose what you're right. going to do, how you're going to build your roster. Yeah, absolutely. 
So you, you you mentioned the Jets. We talked about the Jets and their three first round picks. And um, it's funny, me and Lincoln was watching the draft, and he was like, "Oh man, the Jets got a great draft." And just to be in, you know, the the the, the, the asshole that I am, I'm sure you appreciate this. Even as a Jets fan, I was like, "Ah, it's the Jets. They'll find a way to fuck them up." <laughs> and I'm hey, hoping as a not. Jet fan, you, you, as a Jet fan, you wonder what's gonna go wrong, like, because hey, even though you get this talent pool, you're just like, but somebody's gonna tear an Achilles. Somebody's gonna be high right. on, uh, on OTAs. Like, just something is gonna go wrong. Just yeah. you just traumatize as a Jet fan to expect it, but you know. Everything being everything, even Jet fans, we can, some of us, uh, appreciate the good of a day. And the overall Jet draft went well, man. I, I'm just, I think the top of the draft was great with the first round. I mean, I think that was definitely a high point. But then even in the second round to get uh, Brees Hall, the mm-hmm. running back, who many think is the number one running back in the draft to come out with them, come out with him as a need, um, checking off that box. I think that was excellent as well. Um, they got some uh, additional offensive line help or tight end um, from Ohio State. So everything being everything, I think the Jets had a really, really good draft. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talked about, you know, those first four picks were home runs. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you talk about the offensive line max mitchell he's the uh, you know he's the offensive lineman of the year and uh and, and amongst um non-power five schools mm. so you know really good talent um of course there's a jumping you know level in competition but yeah you know, yeah. yeah but you're taking him at what 111 overall very very good pick so i like what the jets did you know and, and you could tell even the jets were uncomfortable with discussing how well they did. Like, they was like, nah, we don't want to talk about this too much. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we don't right. want to jinx it. We don't want to jinx it. it. We don't right. want to jinx it. Because, uh, you know, we mentioned the last time the Jets had three first-round picks. Um, and they did find a way to screw it up. The only one that had the uh, spent the most of his career in in Jets green was Kyle Brady. And he was the worst of the bunch. So, um, yeah. So, I hope that um, uh, here's to – Jermaine Johnson and um, and, and Sauce, Sauce Gardner. Gardner and who else? They got? Uh, Gary Wilson. And Gary Wilson. Shout out to all three of them, man. Hopefully, you know, they make the Jets competitive in the AFC East and they're a big part of this thing. I hope so, man. I mean, I think, I mean, honestly, it's, it's all about Zach Wilson at this point. And um, if he can uh, move up the totem pole in terms of his development and take it to a, just another level. I think that puts us into the, you know, we are above Miami mm-hmm. and um, now I'm trying to fight with New England as the second best team in the division. And I still look at Buffalo as the beast of the East, but um, I think the New England Patriots, that spot is vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. And they've got their own second year quarterback that he's going to have to battle. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one thing I do like about the Jets, and you know, it remains to be seen how well he does wins and losses wise over the course of the next however long he's there. But I love the mindset of Robert Sala when he he took accountability for the struggles that Zach Wilson had. He was like, "We got to get this man some weapons, yeah, um, and we got to make sure that we're protecting him and get him get him some weapons." Because at the end of the day. He's pretty much saying, you know, my job depends on how well he does. Um, mm. And I was I was appreciative of the, him taking accountability because a lot of coaches in that situation won't directly say it's up to me and it's up to us to get him what he needs to succeed. So I appreciated that from Robert Sala. Yeah. yeah. And, and then when you look at the last two drafts, I mean, I think they've definitely done that. And so with right. this draft – and then you layer that on top of last year with getting um, Elijah Moore, wide receiver, Vera Tucker, um, the the guard. You know, I think those are, are pieces that hopefully, you know, the Jets can look back at in, in a couple of years and be like, you know, we set the foundation along with Zach. 
we set the foundation of this is how we became a better team in uh, 2020 because they got back in 2021 and then the 2022 drafts. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, um, no, we, it, it's, it's going to be in any time the, you know, a, a, a dynasty comes to an end, it's fun to see the transition. So it's going to be fun to see what happens in the AFC East over the next few years. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, only your Dallas Cowboys, man. Um, a little more head scratching, I would say, than the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the first round, uh, Cowboys took offensive tackle Tyler Smith uh, from Tulsa at 24. Uh, 56 overall. Uh, in the second round, they took Sam Williams, the edge rusher from Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. And they got Jalen Tolbert in the third, a uh, wide out from South Alabama. I like him. but um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, They got Jake Ferguson, a tight end. Then a bunch of dudes I don't know other than Damon Clark, I like him, but his career is kind of in the questions right now uh, with a neck injury. So he's pretty much guaranteed he's going to miss this, his rookie year. Uh, but you got him right. at 176. Otherwise, he was probably a second rounder. So good value there. Um, and they got John Ridgway, a D tackle from Arkansas at 178. Big plugger. Like you said, y'all need it. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what were your thoughts on, on what the Cowboys did? So I definitely was uh, my excitement about the draft has definitely increased the more I've done research on these players because like you said it was definitely a kind of a lot of who what what um but from a positional perspective it definitely mm-hmm. checked the boxes of what we needed in terms of adding to our roster but you know so that's that's sometimes a good thing but it also concerns me at times because you wonder are you picking for need or are you picking getting value and getting the best player available right so you never really know but you know the more i looked at this um lineman you know as they were drafting him and the the things you heard were you know he's a he's a mauler he's athletic kind of roar gets a lot of penalties as soon as i heard gets a lot of penalties i was like oh my god like i just totally checked out because i was like (laughs) right that's not what we need like we got plenty of guys who get a lot of penalties we don't need that at all but then you know the more a couple of days go by and then i'm reading stuff from the his coach and of course his coach is biased but he definitely was like you know a lot of those penalties was just him dominating people and throwing them to the ground and the refs throwing penalties on them because they was like there's no way you can just end up on the ground like that without somebody holding you right yeah, so sure. either way you know that that's it's possible it could just be his coach standing up for him but then I, I guess i just decided to be a little more open-minded and just see what we get but at the the more I've read on him, it's like with good coaching, he's going to be a really good pro if he takes to the coaching. Right. And so one thing I do know is that when it comes to offensive lines, the Cowboys have good coaches. When it comes to veterans, the Cowboys have the type of veterans that have done it the right way. And if he takes to the veteran leadership, maybe a Tyron Smith Zach Martin can have a really good impact on him as he comes into the league. It helps him develop. So, you know, I definitely feel a little bit better considering that um, he's going to play. He's going to start on the inside. And the guy we had at left guard, his weakness was strength. He consistently, Connor Williams, got Mm -hmm. bulldozed and pushed back into the backfield. So if we can get a strong plug and put him in a left guard. I think that in itself is an upgrade. So I, I like him more. I did research. I definitely like the Sam Williams pick because, you know, we didn't necessarily need a pass rusher because people, a lot of people cr- uh, criticize the Cowboys for not picking Jermaine Johnson and even going after this lineman. They're like, why right. wouldn't you take this guy? When y'all just lost Randy Gregory, well, because we got Dante Fowler and, you know, not to say he's the next Lawrence Taylor, but we did sign him as a free agent. So he's going to get some snaps. We also also got a guy that we re-signed in Dorrance Armstrong. And so 
Yeah, right. right. So it's kind of like if you want to assign people to give them a chance to play, you can't just get a first round pick and then say, oops, I'm sorry, back up. We don't let this first round pick play, which is usually what happens when you get a first round pick. So I was OK with them waiting to the second round to get the pass rush and put a little less pressure on him to play right now. Maybe he can be a specialist and allow the people that we re-signed and signed to play to basically um, give him a shot. And so I'm, I'm okay with the Sam Williams. And like you said, I too like Tolbert as a wide receiver. Um, He has a lot of speed, a lot of size, um, exactly what we need in terms of the type of body type um, and uh, skills to our wide receiver group. And with Gallup getting, um, having a knee injury and going to come back, you know, a few games into the season, this kid's going to get a chance to prove himself and get some snaps. So, hey, I am definitely more excited for the Jets draft, but it's this draft is more of a let's wait and see. To see how um, these players turn out, and then I also like the tight end they got from um, was it Wisconsin? Um, Ferguson, or maybe Ohio. yeah, uh, yeah, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Like him because we needed him, and then the plugger that you talked about, like he's exactly the type of D tackle that. And I said that like we have plenty of the three technique right details plenty of those three three of them what we lack is that big dude who look you stand right there push the center backwards don't let people run right up the middle um we don't have a lot of that so i was glad to see them pick pick that guy up and you know it's it's a, a lot of um, and that's the draft. There's there's a f- lot of players that you really won't know if they're going to make the team, if they're going to develop. Um, definitely, we had about four or five of those players. But um, I, I do have a lot of faith in our personal, our our scouting recently. We've done some good jobs in getting third rounders, fourth rounders that have um, come and, and made a play in, in our league. So hopefully we get one or two of them with our fourth because we have four fifth rounders so if we can get one or two of those fifth rounders to you know be be around in three or four years then this would be a good draft yeah absolutely well cool man um i'm gonna put you on the spot you know i like to do that um mm-hmm. thought about something but give me one first rounder who will give me one who's gonna be a hall of famer and give me one who's gonna be out of the league in five years Wow. So I'm going to go with the Hall of Famer. I'm going to go with... (laughs) Okay, so Hall of Famer, I'm going to go with... This might surprise you. I'm going to go with the the icky... Mm. Like yeah, offensive up. lineman. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna go with him. That's I think he's leaning too. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. I was going with him. And then who's gonna be out of the league in five years? I'm just gonna shit on Belichick and say Cole Strange. <laughs> <laughs> Damn strange. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I like the Iguano pick. Um, yeah. One because you know, it, offensive tackle is a little risk, a little less risky than say. You know, saying Kenny Pickett's gonna be a Hall of Fame. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, I like that one. Um, and speaking of which, um, really quickly on my Steelers, I love the Kenny Pickett pick. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, one, you know, if you're gonna go quarterback, I said, you know, I don't mind them going quarterback in this draft, but it's only a one condition: if they don't trade up. If they would have traded up ten picks and gave up the rest of the, like, then I would have been pissed. But to get the best quarterback in this draft and to be sit there and let him fall to you. Um, and the guy who's, you know, ready to play out of, out of all, all the quarterbacks available. 
Um, I was I was digging the Kenny Pickett pick um, simply because I'm realistic. You know, there was a 21 year gap between Ben Roethlisberger, well, between um, Terry Bradshaw retiring and Ben Ben Roethlisberger being drafted, right? And between okay. that, we had a whole bunch of dudes who were okay. You know, um, Mark Malone, Cordell Stewart, uh, Mike Tomczak. You know, you know. But then we had some guys who were absolutely horrible. The Dave Browns, and so they, you know, so those. Mm, mm. <laughs> um, chances are, Kenny Pick is not going to be Ben Roethlisberger. It's not going to happen. Um, and for everybody expecting, you just plug and play. You know, replace one Hall of Famer with another one. That shit don't happen unless you get lucky and you're the Colts and Peyton Manning has a neck surgery and you get the first overall pick and just plug in Andrew Luck. Or you get the Packers with Brett Favre. Right, exactly. Now, if that happens, great. But it's the reason why we can name those on one hand, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Because they stick out. (laughs) Because it's rare. And if Kenny Pickett turns out to be solid, if he turns out to be the guys they're talking about, if he's... You know, Kirk Cousins like, or you know, somebody in that in that vein. Fine, I can deal with that. You got him at twenty. You know, um, and with that kind of defense that the Steelers have and continue to put out there year after year, um, with the young receivers they have, with the guy who's budding into the most promising running back in the league, with those mm. kind of things around him. You know, you ain't, you ain't asking him to be Roethlisberger. And realistically speaking, it's a reason why most teams have two, at most, Hall of Fame quarterbacks in their history. Uh, so I like the pick and pick, man. I think he's ready to play. I think he's extremely accurate. He's mobile. Um, he's a leader by all accounts. So I like the pick. Um, and it gives you an identity moving forward. Right. Um, and the, my, my steal of the draft, I think, is going to be, uh, you know, um, George Pickens, the receiver out of Georgia, we got in the second round. Mm. Um, before his ACL injury, which he's you know fully recovered from now, but he was probably the best receiver in this draft. Um, you know, he only played in five games last year because of the injury. Um, but if you go back and watch him and Derek Stingley from Derek Stingley's one good year, he killed him. Pickens killed Stingley. I mean, wow. play after play after play. Um, and he flashed it even after the injury. So, um, love the Pickens pick. Um, and what it does also is gives them some, the, the team, some leverage um, with Deontay Johnson becoming a free agent soon. And you don't have to overpay him necessarily. Like we just mentioned with the receivers. Um, so, to get Pickens and Calvin Austin, first of all, it sounds like this was like a 1986 draft with our, our two receivers, George and Calvin, um, it just sounds like <laughs> old school receivers. Right, right, right. right. Um, but get Calvin Austin, you know, in, 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 the, in the fourth round. I'm um, a guy who's being compared, you know, size and speed wise, not necessarily player wise, to Tyreek Hill. Um, but you know, to get that, that kind of talent to kind of replenish your receiver room. Um, love those picks, man. So, you know pretty solid draft overall but i love the fact that they uh you know i, I did the, the more we were exposed to malik willis the less i wanted him oh um, really yeah um one because you know it's going to be at least a year maybe two they until he's ready to play okay and yeah. by that point if it's two years you got mitchell trubisky under a two-year contract and then you go in with Malik Willis and you find out he's just not that guy. That sets you back a decade almost. Hmm. Yeah, you know, you yeah. already wasted two years with, with 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 you know, with Trubisky as a bridge. Then when that bridge is over, you're going it's gonna be another two years before you admit that mistake on Willis. So and that's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, I've been saying this about Malik Willis for a while. I like him, but he's Tyrod Taylor to me. Mm. Tyrod Taylor wasn't a first-round pick either. 
And I think the league kind of showed us what they felt about Malik Willis. Um, you know, if the Steelers had taken Pickett and then two picks later, like Bill Belichick took Malik Willis, <laughs> like I'd be like, oh, man, we missed out on Willis. But now everybody yeah, had yeah. their chance. And um, Lincoln was kind of moping around the house after the Steelers took Pickett because he wanted Willis. And by the time the third round came, I was like, man, the league is telling you that there's a difference in what the media and fans and podcast hosts think about players versus what teams think a lot of times. Um, and the league told us what they thought about Malik Willis and a lot of these quarterbacks in the draft. So um, I was not upset at all missing out on Willis because especially as a first-round pick, you want to see what you got like pretty quickly. I don't want to wait two years to see what I got in my first round pick, especially from a you know from the standpoint of I think this team is competitive and that I think they're ready to be they're ready to be you know contenders pretty quickly. Um, so I don't want to have to wait on my two years or a year and a half on my first round quarterback to contribute to that. So um, overall, I was I was happy with the draft. You know I think Demarvin Leal, the uh, the the defensive lineman we got out of Texas A and M. One of the best defenders in the SEC. Um, really, really, really good draft, man. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, history has definitely shown very few short quarterbacks are going to be first round picks. Like, it, again, kind of back to um, what I was saying about Stingley, though, but and, and it applies here as well. It's just that you have certain expectations of certain picks. And so that first rounder is not, you know, you don't want to have mm -hmm. the, he ain't got the right body type or let's see how we're going to make this work. That's not what you're looking for with your first round pick as a quarterback. You're looking, let me plug him and play and let's make, let's go get these wins. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I've heard a lot of disappointment, from um, Steeler fans, including my son, but um, I, I agree with your assessment. Like this is just what the league thinks of quarterbacks in this draft, right? And you know, you said something very key. Um, you know, you said you know, there's very few. I mean, when you mentioned Derek Stingley, and kind of along those same lines, uh, how injured injured college players become injured pros. Um, mm -hmm. inaccurate college quarterbacks usually become inaccurate mm. professionals. <laughs> True <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I can name very few, and I can only think of one who's big not with inaccuracy, and that's Josh Allen. Who's And he still has accuracy issues now. Right. Um, right. You know, but I, I can't think of anyone else who's had, had like accuracy concerns like to that extent and that would take it in the first round and completely overcame them. I can't think of anybody. Um, and then because it's, 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 it's rare, right? It's very it rare. Happen. And so to, I get it. I get the traits, you know, the strong arm, the mobility, but I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think Malik Willis is the type of athlete who can overcome if he turns out to be completely inaccurate, you know, say he's, you know, how inaccurate Michael Vick was his first couple of years. Mike Vick could get away with that because he was, shit, he was born as Michael Vick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lamar Jackson can get away with that because he's fucking Lamar Jackson. Malik Willis ain't that kind of athlete um, where he can, you know, make you forget that he just overshot his wide open receiver by 15 yards. So, you know, right. I don't, so, <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, so I was, you know, hopefully I can talk your son off the ledge, man. It, uh, I, be all right. well, it's, it, and, and, and it's just really, and like, a, like a lot of things in the draft, it's just, it's group thing and it's sheep thing. You know what I'm saying? We hear things so much that we start to believe it. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, even teams fall for it, but I, you know, I think, I think, organizations told us throughout this draft what they thought of Malik Willis. And there's no knock on him. I think he ends up in a great situation. He's just not a first-round quarterback. 
Yeah, I think he's landed up in a great spot too. And um, I think with some time along with the system, uh, you know, I think he'll have the opportunity to prove that, you know, he's, he's the real deal. So right. um, we, we, we shall, shall see. see. We shall yeah, see. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, so listen to the question before we move on to the history. Um, I guess Pooh got caught up um, not messing with his French mate. Um, but yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so listen to the question. We got Jeff from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, shout out to the Badgers. Speaking of, uh, y'all's tight end from Wisconsin. So shout out to Jeff from Madison. Um, good question. So Jeff wants to know if you could have dinner, if you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Yeah. So you know, um, uh, always questions like this for for me. Uh, it it had definitely sent around. Um, my parents would be the first two, and then the third one would be, you know, our great grandfather, Ulysses mm-hmm. Son Glimp. Wow. And you know, I I think he'd be the most fascinating dinner table guest of all, and to be a a a, a, a man. In the, I guess in the early 1900s, mm-hmm. with with two sets of families with ten kids, and they're living right next door to each other. Mm. The the stories that that man could share right. would take up a weekend, and so I would be I would just continually plug in question after question after question because it it just seems like a whole nother universe where something like that would it and could happen and so, <laughs> and he still he, he lived to tell about it right lived the t- kids grew up you know knowing about it the grandkids grew up looking at their grandfather as the grandfather and it just yeah i would love to ha- hear that story yeah so that, that's who i came up with okay good answer um mine and then who has joined us Hello, Thomas Steven. Man, what's going on? I y'all wouldn't believe this, but my mic. I, I'm I'm talking on the old dial up mic. I I couldn't find my USB for my mic. I've took for that thing for thirty five minutes. <laughs> what's going on, gentlemen? Hey no, man. Well uh I'm gonna hit you with this list of the question in a second. Sound good. Um but yeah, my mine would be um each of our fathers. My father, your father, and Pooh's father. I mm. would want to have dinner with them mm. and have them as guests on our show. How dope would that be? Hello. That would be awesome. It would be. No um, doubt. I'm sure they don't understand. None of them don't know shit about the draft, but we're going to talk a whole bunch of shit about something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you know, I've, you know, Al, your father has always been you know, one of like my biggest like mysteries because I never got to meet him, right? Uh, well, not, yeah. you know, as a, not when I could form a sentence. Uh, um, <laughs> and, and so, um, it's so many things. This is why, like, I love the fact that we do this um, because it, it documents our voices. Like, it's always like, even when, mm. you know, I mention, I think about my father, I think about, you know, any of our uncles. I could hear their voices in my head, right? Um, and so I would love to know how your father's voice sounded or stuff like that. So it's just mm. things I always wonder about. And then, Pooh, by the time we were friends, um, you know, your father had passed. Um, by the time we were, you know, good friends where I was like, man, you know, it would be dope to meet your dad. Um, but I would love to have the three of our, our fathers as guests on our show. Um no, no, I just think that would be dope. Mm. That would be awesome. Yeah. No doubt. No uh, doubt. So, so, yeah. So, Poo, the question was uh, from Jeff in Madison, Wisconsin. It was, if you could have dinner um, or sit down with three people, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Man, that's, that's a really good one. 
and you you guys know how I feel about Pac. But uh but I'm gonna go with my grandmother and my, my granddad. Mm. You know, and, and mm. I'm gonna go with, with my dad as well. Uh why? My grandmother, because like I guess it was a lot of things that I still didn't know and 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 I know that she used to, you know, make sauces and cook foods for for the for this store. And they pumped and cooked all the food and you know, I just want to, you know, ask grandma, you know what, y'all want to open your own store? Like, because, mm-hmm. like, those people really, really, you know, gotten wealthy, you know, off of my grandma's cooking and sauces and, and you know, and things like that. But, I, you know, I just want to ask a question. And my granddad, he, he passed, her husband, he died when I was 13, 12, 13. Mm-hmm. And, and he's just such an enigma to me, you know, because I, <laughs> I probably can't recall... 20 words, you know, out, out of him, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and for some reason, I just, <laughs> until I gotten older, like, I, I just thought that he hated me, you know? Really? And, yeah, yeah, because he never talked. Hmm. Like, he never talked, and, and it was like he was, <laughs> to me, it was like he was so mean, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He was like, you gonna let that boy do all that marriage, just beat him. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, so that's all I can remember. Beat him. Beat him. You know, you know, I'm going to take a stick to you. You know, so that's all I can recall. Mm-hmm. But I remember going on a, a trip because he used to deliver boats to like Anderson and Gaffney. And, and I and I rode, I rode with him once. And, okay. and <laughs> he, through the whole trip, like there and back, <laughs> I might have heard eight words. You know, um, we stopped at the store and he was like, what you want? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so we went in there. He's like, it's down pick- three. We got five right. hours left. Right, right, right. right. Here so you go. He, That's it. Right. So right. He, he, you know, I went in the store. I picked it out. And, you know, we rolled, you know, and, and, and the same thing on the way back. I picked out something, you know, we rolled back. And that was all I heard him talk, you know. So, and then my dad, you know, and he still, he 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 was a you know enigma to me as well because, I mean, I I I was with him a lot, but he was like my granddad. He he didn't talk. Mm-hmm. Like he like, never he never he never talked. I can remember you know speaking to him when I when I was older. You know, I was dating this girl, and um, and my mom was like. Pooh, you better talk to your daddy. You know, that he used to go with her mama, that she might be your sister. Go ahead. You know, yeah, so um, <laughs> so I went, I was like, hey, dad, you know, what about so-and-so? You know, his mom said I might be my sister. He was like, boy, you good. They ain't my daughter, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 so he was like, yeah, I got a lot of them, but that ain't one. You know, I was like, all right, then, cool. But, <laughs> but like, I never really... I mean, we talked sporadically in and out, you know, how you doing, but I would love to just, you know, speak to him and, and pick his brain. And and I never had the conversation with him, but I, I would love to tell him, you know, I, I forgive him. Well done. Mm. You know what uh, I'm saying? I, I, I would love to do that. How, how old were you when your boss passed? Oh, he, he didn't, he, he just wasn't around when, I, when me and you was together. He died. Right after my graduation, he died when I was turning twenty-five. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I knew. I, oh, I'm just saying, I, I just wanted people oh, to get the kind of. Oh yeah, 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 he died when I was <laughs> okay. Yeah, I graduated. Okay. He got sick. He died like right after my birthday. Right. My birthday, right. November thirtieth. He died December third. Right. My twenty-fifth. Yeah. Cool man. Damn good question, Jeff. Fucking mm-hmm. great yeah. question. Um, you know, and then when I like. It's this love hate relationship I have with like these limitations of numbers. Like three people, that's all you're gonna give me, Jeff. But then I see the importance of why it's only three. So yeah, I get it. Um but damn good question. Um you trying you trying to have a dinner party, see Jeff right, like man. Just, for real. Jeff you like, get three exclusive. <laughs> for real. <laughs> oh man. Um Pooh, we'll talk about the bears later, man. We're pushing the hour. Um 
We, we, we know we no doubt. Them, I get so it. We went in. Um, no, I get it. I get yeah. it. All right. But yeah, I want to drop these uh, this week in history on y'all. Um, pretty interesting. So uh, this week on May 2nd, 1920, the first Negro Baseball League game was played. Hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. May 6th, 1915, Babe Ruth hit his first career home run and pitched 12 innings for the Boston Red Sox in a 4 Dang. 3. Yeah, in a 4 to 3 <laughs> extra of course extra innings win over the Yankees. How how ironic is that? Uh, May 6th, 1954, Roger Bannister became the first person to run a sub 4 minute mile. Uh, so he ran a mile in three minutes, 59 seconds, and four tenths um, to, uh, to become the first person to break that mark. And, you know, he wasn't even an athlete. Dude was just, he was he was a scientist who said that, I think this is possible. I'm just going to go do it. And he did it. How crazy is that? Word. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's the power of the mind, right? Um, in May 7th, 1994, Sure, y'all remember this one. The Denver Nuggets became the first number eight seed to defeat a number one seed in the NBA playoffs. Y'all remember who they beat? They beat Super Sonics. The Seattle Super Sonics, yeah. The Rain Man in them. Yeah. yeah. The I can see Matumbo. the Kimbo now right there, <laughs> right. 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 on the court. Yeah, with the ball in his hand. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And lastly, this week in history, uh, May 1st, 1950. Poet Gwendolyn Brooks became the first black person awarded the Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize. Pretty dope. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. So, um, shout out to all these moments in history, man. These are pretty interesting. It's, it's amazing what you uh, what you learn and then what you remember as they get closer to what you actually saw um, in these in these history moments. So, uh, these are fun. Uh, y'all got anything for me, man, before we bounce about here? Any parting shots? Uh, no, I do not. All right. Uh, Pooh, you anything? Um, we already shouted out the mothers, man. You want to shout out the, the women in your life? I, yeah, definitely, man. The moms, my wife, my mother, you know, your moms, you know, Al's, rest in peace, and, you know, all of that, man. Um, Definitely Mother's Day. Uh, definitely Mother's Day. But I, I'm, I'm, I guess I want, I, <laughs> I want to see what we're going to do. Of course, the Bears, I'm excited. To, to to see what move we're gonna make, but like you said, we'll hit on that next week or or the week after or the week after. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll hit on it. Uh, we're actually, we're gonna be off next week, so y'all right uh, don't be looking for us. <laughs> right, yeah, right. We, we all we all just hired French maids, so we got work to do to clean up around here. Um, but nah, we uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, Pooh, when you listen to the rest of the show, you'll you'll get that reference. Um, but yeah, we'll be back in two weeks and there'll be a bit of a surprise, a little change in the show. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to y'all then until then defy life, defy life, defy life. Peace.